Welcome back to Let's Clone. My name would be Stephen French, and on top of being sick, we don't have internet as we change our ISP, so I'm not totally sure how or when I can upload this, but I'll get on it whenever I can. Um, in this series, we're going to be making Ice Climber, a classic NES arcade game from a while back, a game I used to play pretty heavily on my uh, NES when I was a wee, a wee Stephen. Uh, but I'm going to do this one a little bit differently, and it might be kind of more in line with how I do some projects later on. Typically, I code out the whole clone that I want, and then I write out some pseudocode for each part that I want to break it up into, and then I code it again and while I record it and go that way. But that's like two and a half times of writing out each project, and I think I could speed it up. So in this one, I'm going to code it once. I'm going to kind of explain as I go what I'm doing. There will be more mistakes, but I think the power of editing and pirating Adobe Premiere will help me get through that. I mean, downloading and purchasing Adobe Premiere will help me get through that. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to fuck up a lot because I am feeling pretty sick, and I apologize in advance, but let's do our best to dive into this one. Cool. All right, so I will be actually using my gamepad I have uh, bought for, well, it was $2 because it was 50% off, and it was only $4 at Goodwill. But I got an NES and an SNES USB controller. I'm going to be using this. You can use keyboard input. There'll only be one file that you'll have to change for any of that, so don't worry about it. But if you have a, a keyboard or if you have a gamepad, it's kind of fun to, to clone these old games and make them work in a way that kind of feels authentic. But um, I'm going to hope to just try to get through a bit of Popo, the Ice Climber, Player One, j just him. So Sprite. Popo, uh, we're just going to give them an, an idol for now. You'll find all the assets in the description folder. I have created a, a bunch, um, but if you go down to Popo's little file, you'll see all these, the animation size, I guess the sprite sizes, and you can just count. Idol is going to be down here, so we just need the one image. These are at 23 by 30s. Uh, vertical cell offset, what is that, 4? Nice. Um, I meant to delete the color. You have that option, but you can just do it here. Cool. So we have little Popo guy. Why didn't that delete? Get out of here, Greenfoot. Bang. Bang. I'm going to center all of these. I, I think it'll work. Uh, I don't know. We'll <laughs> figure all this out as we go. Uh, we're going to create a room. I don't remember the size of this room. Um, we're just going to do it. No, nope, we're not. We're going to go 256 by 256. It doesn't have to be this. It doesn't have to say this. We're again, we're just starting with some super super basics. Um, Remain. I'll call it that. Let's get into our object. We'll create an object. Popo. Give him the one animation that we do have. Um, create. Now we're gonna do this guy with a bit of a state machine. Uh, if you don't know what a state machine is, it's gonna be. Kind of, kind of what it is. We're going to create a little machine or a little bit of code that will listen to what state the player is in, being if he's walking or if he's idle, if he's jumping, attacking, or dying, and then we can kind of create some scripts that will only run inside of whatever state we want that script to run. State machine. But we will initialize that young popo. We're going to do just some basic stuffs of image speed is equal to zero, so we don't have to cycle through it like we only have one sprite in this image but in general we want to start off with nothing um i need so we'll put these into animation variables we're also going to have some movement variables uh, we're going to have some like player slash health variables we're going we're gonna to have a bunch of variables. But here for movement speed, we're going to have horizontal speed is equal to 0. We're going to have a vertical speed equal to 0. We're going to have a movement speed, or a walking speed, is equal to, let's say, 3. I don't fucking know. Um, we're going to have a jump speed is equal to 8. This guy jumps hella high. All of this, this type of stuff is stuff that like, we just want to get the player moving and colliding and, and attacking and everything. And then we'll go back and kind of fine-tune all of the, uh, these variables to make it feel a little bit more like the original. Um, I don't think I need a friction yet or anything. This this should be good for now. Uh, for our animation variables, I don't really think I need animation speed, but we do... 
I guess we'll have a uh, x direction is equal to one, meaning that we're facing to the right. We will be able to use that to toggle our our all of our sprites animations, so we can have them face left and right. We don't need a separate sprite for for each direction. Um, all right, then we're just going to go into I'm going to type in anim walk. It's going to be equal to ah, fuck it, we're only going to do the idle because we don't have the others imported yet. So our animation for idle is going to be equal to sprite popo idle. We're going to have a whole bunch of these as we import all the others, but I just want to again get the basics out of the way. Coming into our script, let's first handle our player input. Uh, script player input, and this is where we'll be having, I guess, the main difference between our code if you are one to use um, a keyboard or if you're going to use a controller. So script player input, I, I don't care. Like you can make a, a variable that you can pass through here to kind of check what device input you're using. You can make a start menu option to choose which one you want, you want to use so the player can choose keyboard or controller. Play with that one all you want. If you have any questions, please let me know. But I'm just going to put it onto this guy. So I'm going to have key, uh, I guess left is going to equal, we're going to do, all right, we're going to do it this way. So I'm going to do key left and key right are both going to be equal to zero. And then I'll run a check so we can set it. We'll say if gamepad uh, axis value now the device is going to be the device that your controller is plugged in to. Um, I don't know. Usually, for a lot of my other projects, the first controller I plug in is registered as device zero. For some reason, this guy always registers as device four. So you might want to play around for that with that for a bit and try to figure out which one you're using. But that should just be trial and error. Axis left horizontal. So we're going to say if this is equal to negative one, uh, then key left is equal to negative one. We're going to do the same thing for key right. Ooh. Key right is equal to zero. If this guy here is equal to positive one, then key right is equal to positive one. Now we're going to have a key jump is equal to gamepad. Uh, I think this one was one. Uh, gamepad check. No, that's why. Gamepad check. What? Is it button? Why am I having such a Oh, because I'm having a hard time fucking breathing. Uh, gamepad button check pressed. And then here we're going to be doing again device four. I, I'll never know why. Face. One. Just out of trial and error, I found out that that was one, or at least my my B key is one, my A key is two, and to be honest, I, I don't recall right now which one should be for jump, which one should be attack. But for right now, I'm just gonna use B as jump, A as attack. It's gonna work for me. Key left, key right. Um, neat. Now we're gonna. Oh no, good idea. So initialize pump, but we've got all of this stuff. We're going to actually create the state machine in another um, implement state machine. We're going to do uh, enum of states. Uh, we're going to have idle walk attack jump. And death. Those are the states that we're going to have. I think it's current state is equal to states dot idle. Will be what we have. I'm gonna put that at the bottom. I believe with the numerators, it doesn't matter where you make them. I believe they work globally, so you can use them anywhere else. But we're gonna have current state at first equal to states dot idle, and that kind of creates all the states that we need that into our stuff of it and you could have that you could have all this code in the same location as this but that's fine but here we're going to do uh, state mechanics no play mechanics yeah uh, so we're gonna do a switch statement for our um, our state machine so switch 
current state. We're going to have a case for if current state is equal to states.idle. Uh, break. And we're going to have one of these for each of our potential states. So we have idle, walking, jumping, attacking, death. Walk, yeah. Attack, order doesn't matter. Jump, death. Uh, now, really quick, we're just going to, I'm just going to put in a show debug just to make sure that we are in whatever state. This is all just kind of my own shitty debugging. God damn it. But I want it. We're just going to have here. It'll show an idle. It'll show walking. It'll show attacking. It'll show jumping. And it'll show dying. Whatever state we're in, right now should be state i. It's just going to show state i. Let's come in here, throw in our little popo, and see just real quick how many times I've already fucked up. I want this T to help me more. Good. So we're in state idle. Um, since we know that one kind of fires, I'm going to get rid of it. It's going to be annoying. Uh, so here, we're going to have a whole bunch of scripts. So I'm going to actually create a group called player. Put all the scripts in there. Uh, we're going to have script popo idle. Home. Alright, good. Now, I want these to kind of do different things. Like, what we're going to do in our state machine here is at each point where we set up our state, or, or I guess with each state that we run, we're going to run the script for that corresponding state. So, script popo idle will be run right here. But I want to do a few different things because in some some of these states will require functionality in other states. Like, while we're idle, we need to be able to attack, but also while we're walking, we need to be able to attack. But in the game, when you attack, you stop walking. So I need my, my walking state to include my ability to attack, but I need the act of attacking to switch me out of walking state and into just my attacking state where I am just attacking, which will, I guess, default back to idle state until player presses a key, if that makes sense. So I'm going to want in these states some code that is relevant only to this state, and I want some code that is an option for this state that might be an option for other states. So what I want to do is when I first enter my, my state machine, uh, or I guess when I first enter my idle state, I want to set up my, my idle animation and my um, animation speed, things like that. Uh, so I'm going to do set up idle state. We're going to have image speed is equal to zero image index no sprite index is equal to and then idle and I think for this one I want my image index to be equal to zero I don't think this one would matter too much but then we're gonna call our idle so if anything any code that goes into our idle script is gonna be idle code that could happen anywhere else I don't I think that in this case it actually will but this is just how we're gonna do it now I'm going to do uh, really quickly, like if um, key left is equal to negative one uh, or key right is equal to one, then I want to leave. So we're going to do uh, exit state. So these are all the conditions in which we would want to exit our idle state. I'll type in idle here just so we have it. Exit idle state. So if key left or key right are being active, uh, enter walk state. Now there might be more conditions here because we might have to check whether or not like we're on the floor, although while you're in idle you should be. So I'm going to be rambling a lot in this, I'm sorry. So we're going to say current state is equal to states dot walk. And just like that, we will throw ourselves into our walking state. But something has to happen first because we have not given ourselves access to the uh, the player input. So script player input. Good. 
So now we at least have access to those variables. We are in our idle state. If key left is equal to negative one or key right is equal to one, we're gonna switch into our walk state. Right now it'll just start printing a W and we can't do anything about that. So let's just get that much done. And W, good. So left and right works just fine. Let's add another sprite. Actually, eh, I'll put these in a, a folder after. So sprite popo walk. There's no walk right or walk left because we're going to just flip that file. Create from a strip. We're going to use this one I forgot right here. Remove background color. I'll get rid of all that green for us. But we have our walking. So we're going to need three images at three. We want these to be back at the top. And then right there we've got, you can do a little preview. Slow this down a bit. And we got a little walking guy. So, in here, um, okay, we don't have a walking script yet, so we're gonna add one. We have proven that we can enter into our walking uh, script, so that's fine. Popo script walk, yeah, player, create a script. Cool. So now we have a walking script that we can access. Let me just do what I meant to do earlier. Player, I'm just gonna call him Popo. I don't know if I'm gonna include Nana in this game or not. It would be pretty simple to do, so I, I might just kind of do more of a, an explanation as to how one could do that and then let y'all take care of it. Um, but here, let's set up walk state. We're gonna do image speed is equal to point three so that oh my god that dog already starting up with it uh sprite index is equal to anim walk we obviously haven't created that yet so that would give us an issue image index is equal zero i don't i don't want to do that so let's come into our create we need in i'm gonna go put out that dog after i finish this line walk is equal to sprite popo walk I'll be right back. Oh, fuck you, Bobby. Okay. And here we are. So we have our variable for our correct sprite. Um, I want these stored as variables because later in the game, when you get to, if you're familiar at all with Ice Climber, when you get to the top of the mountain, you actually lose your mallet because there's no more blocks you can, excuse me, can break. So uh, then I can just change this variable and into our, our walk weapon list or walk final, I don't know what I'll call it, but we don't have to worry about that. So here we are setting our walking speed to our left or to our right. Uh, inside of our walking script, we will do, um, let's create an exit uh, walk state. We're gonna pretty much if we stand still, if key, yeah, that's not how you do it. Key left is equal to zero or key right is equal to is equal to zero. Then we're gonna enter our idle state. <clears throat> so current state is equal to states dot idle. So that'll just be a really simple like toggle back and forth. It's gonna animate, he's gonna stop animating, he's gonna animate, he's gonna stop animating. Let's prove that to be right and then we'll actually set his horizontal speed so we can walk around. I'm sick so rarely, and I hate it so much. So I guess I'm glad that it's rare, but like it's not even that bad. It's just like a head cold, just congestion. So if I walk, we start zooming all over the place. That's fine, we start zooming all over the place. I know the main reason for that would be we didn't center this. Here I did or, one of those will always be equal to zero because I don't want to break my D-pad. So if uh, left and right are equal to zero. All right, cool. So yeah, we were just setting into our walk, but then one of them wasn't pressed. We were setting back to our idle. So that's why we weren't actually hitting the, the walking animation frames. But if I hold right, we should be walking to the, well, right now it's going to walk either direction. When I let go, we stop walking. But we're going to fix that right quick. So here, so that's X. Um, we'll call this one in state. I don't know. Uh, so I don't want my extraction to be equal to zero. It should either be one or negative one. 
Um, I, so I guess, well, there's always a bunch of ways to do something. So I'm going to say X direction. Did I make that capital? Because that would definitely not be good if I did. All right, yeah, so X direction. I'm fine with being lowercase as long as I am consistent with that. X direction is equal to 1. I'm going to say if key left uh, is equal to negative 1, then X uh, direction is equal to key left. I guess I could just create it, set it to whichever the higher absolute value is, but that, that should be fine. So um, I think I always want, so there's there's gonna be code that I want only to happen in the states, and there's code that I want to happen pretty much always. So I don't know where I wanna put this, but we're gonna do, we call this always code. I don't know, we might change it. Sprite uh, x scale is equal to, no, image x scale. Image x scale is equal to x direction. I don't want my character to start out as invisible. Okay, cool, we started it as one. If I started it as zero, then he would just be invisible. So now he's gonna flip left and right, whichever one we are pressing. Um, I should, you know what, we're gonna do this a little bit differently. So I'm gonna say if key left is equal to negative one, we're gonna do just some in state code. We're gonna do go left, and then we're gonna do go right. Um, so da 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 uh, and then here, all right, so these are gonna be pretty similar bits of code, just the exact opposite. I, I could do it a different way and I don't feel like it. So X direction is equal to key right. We're gonna do our horizontal speed is equal to, um, actually, I could do our speed is equal to our direction times speed. That could happen. Maybe I don't even need to do all this shit. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna try this. Speed is equal. No. Horizontal speed is equal to x direction times speed. Um, this should be going left or right, just the same. If either of them stop, we go to zero. Uh, and set one more time. Speed is equal to zero. As we exit this state, uh, cool. Now part of our always code will be when we move, like I guess we update our movement. So um, update uh, movement, sure. We're gonna say x plus equals to horizontal speed. Y, we're not doing our, our jump yet. So well, here we can, y plus equals our vertical speed but that's always gonna be set to zero, so we're not gonna worry about it. Uh, so now why I wanna do this here, always check to try to have our last step be to move the player, because say we're in this state, we end up switching into another state that will change our horizontal or our HSP variable. So it'll cancel any, any of our input anyways. So at worst, we're just gonna update plus equals zero. And I'm fine with that, I actually prefer it. Good. So now walking to the right, we walk at our correct speed. Walking to our left, we get destroyed. Uh, why? Why? That is not at all what I was hoping would happen. Let's really quickly add. Oh, in our step, I'm sorry. It's something I do in all of my games. Debug. I'm going to say if. Actually, you know, we're going to do gamepad. Gamepad button check press device four for no reason. Gamepad select. If I hit select, game restart. Oh god, I'm fucking retarded.
Cool. All right. So key, key left is equal to negative one. I copy pasted all that. I'm sorry. If key right is equal to one, key right. Why was that? Why was it even working before? <laughs> I'm more confused by that. All right. When we stop moving, we're gonna set it back to idle. It's like a decent extra challenge to try to code with a head cold. This is, it's almost a fun challenge. It's 100% not, but it's almost. I'll say we got a little guy who walks to the left. We got a little guy who walks to the right. Bingo, bango, zingo, zango. Now I do want to get rid of this where I was just setting it to right. That was just more of a, a testing type of guy. Cool. All right. Now we need to first apply a bit of physics before um, adding our jump because others are going to jump in and just going to go up, 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 and off the screen. But I would like to first come in here and create my controller object. We've used this in some other projects already. I'm going to get rid of that, come up to my controller, add a step event. I'm going to keep my debug script in here. Uh, so if I hit the select key on the controller, or you guys can do an escape key for a keyboard, you reset the game. Um, but I will have create event where we're gonna have, oops, initialize uh, controller object. This isn't controller like game controller, this is just it controls our game. I'm gonna call gravity is equal to 0.2. Oops. All right, give me like a minute. I'm gonna put this dog back outside because fuck him. Um, make sure that our controller is, I probably want it to be persistent, I imagine. Uh, Obbing Jack's controller put in the game. All right, I'm gonna put this dog back outside. So this is another thing that I want to always happen and I'm probably gonna have it happen at the beginning. It doesn't, I don't know if it matters, but I like applying the physics pretty much always to the code no matter what. Uh, we're gonna say if VSP is less than 10, um, then VSP plus equals controller dot gravity. Then we're already applying that always code so now we need to have a sort of collision uh, uh, for an end I'm only going to do vertical so if oh fuck we don't even have any blocks yet create an object sprite block and I'm going to just make this big it's a 32 32 uh, I'm going to make it red because why not? Um, I, I'm not going to make it 32 by 32. We are going to edit, transform, resize canvas, make it a 1616. 16, so I think we can stretch it out. I don't think it really matters. Uh, everything is covered. Get that. I'll leave it at zero. Object block. I could call it solid, I guess. We're just going to do this for now. In our main. Come down here, create an whoopsies object block. Uh, we're just gonna draw across. Good. So we've got a, a thing. So we're gonna say if place meeting at our x y plus vertical speed is gonna hit an object block. Now I'll probably end up putting this in a script as well later on, but we're gonna do it here. We're gonna run a while loop. So while place is not meeting, so meaning that in this next check would return false. We're gonna do x uh, y plus the sine of our vertical speed for an object block. All right, and so while we're not touching at one pixel away from the block that we're trying to detect with, then we're going to see y plus equals to the sine of vertical speed. This is a pixel precise collision. I'm gonna say VSP is equal to zero. Now, pretty much how this works is at our 
our default location. Like here, VSP starts off equal to zero. At any moment when our VSP is less than 10, we're gonna to try to increase by 0.2. So in the first frame, it'll be equal to 0.2, then 0.4, then 0.6, 0.8, it's gonna kind of grow with that. It's not necessarily an exponential growth. It's not gonna be like kind of responding to like gravity in a true sense, but it doesn't need to. This is, it just has to be good enough. We pretty much only have to move down the screen and then we're good. What we're checking here is if plus me, uh, place meeting at our X, because horizontal doesn't matter for just our vertical uh, vertical collision with the floor. If um, Y plus whatever that number is, is going to hit a block, meaning that like, say we're here and our next value would have been down here. If that would hit a block, then we're just checking that next space. Or rather, if we're here, if our next one would hit a block, say all right, the next place would hit a block. And then uh, we're wanting to make sure that just one pixel down in that direction wouldn't then we're gonna do a soft, I guess, collision. We're gonna just bump the player down to that spot inside of a while loop, so it'll completely close the gap. And then we'll have a player on that platform, and then even if VSP is set to point two again, that next collision would uh, would be interfered or would be read true, and it'll set it back to zero. So we'll never try to move past our floor. So we got a guy. He falls. He, now he walks. So we're walking and we're running. We can now apply a jump. So pretty much ways to come out of idle. We have if key left or key right are pressed. Um, then we're that's saying us to our walk state. We're gonna say if key jump is pressed, current state is equal to um, states dot jump. Uh, let's actually come up here and create our sprite for that. So sprite, popo, jump, edit, file, create from a strip. This guy, remove the background again. So our jump just has two frames, so we only need two. And we're going to come down for vertical cell offset of, what was that, three? Yeah. So we just need the two images for our jump. Set of those as well. Um, <clears throat> so we hit jump, we're going into our jump. And since we're idle, that'll be fine. So we're actually going to take this as well. Uh, now I'm a little bit curious about this. Because I, I don't know if I should apply the jump. Because I kind of think I should. Because if I, since it's... If I, if I set it here and we set ourselves to jump, jump is after, so I should be able to still read this and it should be setting true if the jump key is pressed, but I, I don't actually know if that will, will do what I want it to do. But either way, we're gonna do while we're walking, we're gonna do the same thing. So exit walk state will be to enter the idle and to enter the jump. Either way, we are in our jump state now. There we can have that test just for when we hit the jump. We're going to have our setup jump state. And then we're going to script bopo jump. We obviously don't have this script yet. Create a jump. Create a jump. And Pretty much, I want um, if uh, here we do exit state. We're gonna say if uh, that same type of check that we just did. So place meeting at x y plus one because I want to check that the floor is right below us. Object block. Then we're gonna just go into current state is equal to states dot idle. Now I kind of want to do a couple things here. So what we're going to do is when we enter the jump state, uh, we want to set our image speed is equal to zero. And we want to set our sprite index is equal to anim jump, which we also haven't completed yet. So sorry for all the back and forth. Do anim jump is equal to sprite 
nope, popo, jump, and our image speed is equal to zero. Now inside of our, whoopsies, inside of our sprite, where the fuck is it? Uh, lots of text. So inside of our sprite jump code, we're gonna actually change if we're what image index we're on. So we're changing the sprite index to our jump and our image speed to zero. So we're not gonna actually toggle these images, but we're going to say um, in state if VSP is less than zero, we're gonna say image index is equal to zero. We're gonna say else image index is equal to one. So that's just as you're going up, you have your arms back. As you're falling down, you have your arms down. In the game that I was playing on, on I guess through a browser, one that I found, it was a little different. It would actually start the swing a little bit sooner, so we can adjust for that later on. But we're gonna jump up, we're gonna jump down. All right, so I'm trying to figure out when I actually want to set the vertical speed to our jump speed. Um, now, it, while you're attacking, I don't think you're gonna be able to jump, so I'm not gonna need to put it in there at all. When you die, you're not going to put it there. So I think it's just when our walk and our idle happen are the only times that we're going to be able to jump. So I think I'm actually just going to set it in this spot because we're already running this code. And I don't want to be able to double jump, so I don't want to be able to call it while you're doing it. So we're going to say VSP is equal to negative jump speed. Jump speed is equal to 8, and we want to actually go up, and up is the top value of Y is 0, bottom value of Y is the height of the room. So send a negative. I actually want to grab this because I don't think I have even the brackets on the walk. So yes, in order to leave our jump state, we're going to set our jump state, and we're going to jump. That might be enough. We're going to be just falling first and then we'll hit. Although normally I think the game will start with us just on the ground. But we're there. So we can walk left, we can walk right, and when we jump, we jump real fucking high and we fall back down. 8 is a big value for that. Um, where is initialize player? So 8 seems like a bit much. Let's test out 6. Now one thing that I'm curious of, uh, pretty much when we jump, we, we're not going to be able to move. You can't move left or right. I don't know if I should have it so you can change what side you're facing during, but I don't know. So here you can't. Uh, it's actually reading our jumps, our negative ones, and our ones. So I, I actually didn't mean to have those still. But while you jump, there we go. That's part of the issue that I didn't want. So now in in this game, like while you move and you jump, you can't change your direction in air. I don't think, but I will check that just in case. But um, if you're standing still and you jump and then you press over, you can move pretty slowly. And while you're running and you press over, it's actually very very slow. Oh, that was neat. Ah, uh, cool, cool, cool. So another thing that's going on right now. If I jump while I'm walking, when I hit, I'm now in idle state, but we're not forcing our horizontal speed to be zero when we hit our idle state. So that's another good thing to take note of. So our idle state, uh, once we're in our idle, we, we don't want to be able to move in our idle state unless we're sliding. But we can play with that later. I actually don't think that there's any ice, uh, sliding ice in the first map, which is the only one that we're going to be playing with. But and when we're walking, we're going to jump and change the current state. But what we do want to do is if H, whoops, HSP does not equal to 0, I'm going to set HSP equal to uh, HSP times 0.5. So we're just going to set it to half of whatever its value is. So I, Because in, in this game, when you jump, it jumps just terribly, terribly slow as far as like your left and right movement. All right, so, and we jump super slow. I still think that six is too much of a number, but I'm okay with it. Um, for now, inside of, let me just grab this. For now, in our jump state, I'm gonna do for the in state. All right, so that's just our falling animation so in state uh, oops sprite toggle and then go left and go right so if we're pressing left uh, 
So x direction is equal to that, y direction is that, h sub p is speed times 0.5. So I want to continue with that uh, moving slowly. And actually, I don't, since we're doing this here, it should mean that I can get rid of it here in our, in our walk code. So I shouldn't have to preserve our horizontal because once you enter that, if you stop walking, you're going to stop traveling. I'm pretty sure, you, now that I'm thinking about it, I think you can control your X while you're in the air. So we can walk, we can go left and right, we can jump. Oh, cool, so that actually threw me to the right. I don't want that to be happening, but I can change my direction. So why is it throwing me to the right now? So, so we just do go left, right. I'm gonna set my H speed equal to zero. We're gonna say if key left or if key right. I do still wanna to toggle, so we're gonna keep that. All right, so H speed is equal to zero. I'm gonna do, this is stupid of me. A speed is equal to negative one. If we're going right, a speed is equal to so let me say if H speed does not equal to zero, then X dir is equal to H speed. And then we're going to say a speed is equal. So that, that's a little bit past backwards, but I think that'll work. So I'm just going to assume that my horizontal speed is zero. If I walk left or right, I'm going to set it to one or negative one. If I have done either of those, then I'm going to change my horizontal speed accordingly. Now I'm worried that when I jump, no, I'm assuming a speed is equal to zero. So that, that should be fine. I might want to go back and change how the walk works to kind of replicate this a little bit better. But uh, yeah, we're just kind of winging it. I'm, I might not even add the death animation yet. Hell, I might not even add the attack yet. Um, ah, I think I should, I should. So we can walk, we can walk. We can jump and I don't travel anywhere. We can jump and then I can travel or I can go left or right. So that's actually kind of working well. If we're jumping while we're holding any of the buttons, that was all right. It didn't do anything. I might have just like slipped off the button because it looked like I started to fall completely vertically. But there we go. So we've got a slow, irritating jump, much like in the actual game. Um, while jumping, we shouldn't be able to to change states. So that that's fine. That we exit our state on our jump. I think the only way to exit the state is when you touch the ground, you pop into your idle state, and then your idle is listening for all of the others. Um, now let's go into our attack state. Let's get rid of this J, because that's been working fine. Let's get rid of printing this, because we don't need to. Uh, we're not gonna need to for the death, or for the attack, but we're gonna actually jump into our attack now. So let me see, we're gonna need a few things. Whoops, sprite. Popo attack, edit, file, create from a strip. We've got this guy removing the background. Our attack is three frames, so we need three and three with the vertical cell offset of only one. And here we have this. We're gonna center it like we have with everything else. We're going to first create an animation for it. I guess an animation variable. Uh, attack is equal to sprite. Popo attack. We're gonna come down into our step. We do need to create a script for it, but when we attack, we're going to set up attack state, which will be sprite index is equal to anim attack. Image speed, nope, it's equal to 0 0.1. We're going to make it really slow for right now. Um, and then script, popo, attack. Uh, where's 
create a script, create an attack. We're going to do an exit state. I'll say if image index is equal to image number minus one. Uh, but let's do a floor first so we don't have any rounded variables. Then current state is equal to states.title. Cool. This pretty much just means that when we finish the animation, we're going to move on. So we're setting our animation, we're setting our, our image speed, and we're hitting this state. Now we want to enter this state only when we attack. So if key jump, no, if key attack, this is where we're going to enter our uh, current state is equal to states.attack. And I do actually want to set my image number equal to zero. I, I don't know if we need to do that here. I just don't want the animation to be able to end too soon. Um, but then while we're walking, we're going to do the same thing. Although we also need to set our horizontal speed to zero because you're not able to walk and attack at the same time. Let's see how that works first. We'll try to to go while, while walking and walk, while standing, see what happens. Definitely not doing the death state right now. I think this will be enough. Okay, okay. Image number is read only. Uh, oh, um, shit, my bad. This in my image index is equal to zero, which means I also have to change that in my my walk. Image, whoa. Image number is the last image in the sprite. Uh, Image index is what we're looking for. I don't know what that means. Key attack. Huh? Malformed assignment statement. I don't I don't know what you mean by that. That's in my idle. This is my walk. Key attack. I should have it. Alright, uh, so let me just make sure that I have in here. Yeah, it's key attack. All right, maybe those errors were just called because of the other errors. Or at least we can hope. If not, we'll still have two or three of them pop up, and that'll be confusing. Cool. So here, if I swing, good. So it it looks kind of silly because it, it goes really, really quickly. But we can jump if we can't swing there. If we're running and we swing, it does that. Cool. So one thing that I want to do is for my attack, uh, what if we just copy paste this one? Just so we have one extra image while we're sitting at the end of that animation. So we can kind of just hold that frame because it, it's hitting it and, and moving away. If anything, I actually want that last frame to last a little bit longer because there's just dunk how the game does it. Now I think that it's actually a hold. If you hold the button, it'll just keep attacking. But there you go. Yeah, so. He attacks. If we raise the animation speed for that, then it'll swing a little bit faster. Attack. Uh, well, no, 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 no. Step. So, like, if we were to make this a point two, oh no, twenty one. So now we're just gonna attack a little bit faster. It's still only triggering on a like a, a, a press instead of a hold, but. I've got to take more notes about the game to figure out if that's the way that I want it to work. Yeah, I'm into that. Can't attack while we're in the air. I can't attack when we're walking. Neat. Cool. And select still brings you back. All right, guys, that is all that we're going to do for, I guess, part one of our ice climbers tutorial. Um, in the next part, I want to throw in the background, have the player be able to break the blocks above us and be able to jump up to the top. It won't have like the, the fancy scrolling for the game yet. We're not going to include the enemies yet. Those are going to be things that we do in parts, I imagine, three and four. But yeah, let me know what you think of this, this project, this tutorial series so far. Let me know what you think of my attempt at kind of one-shotting this and kind of doing the code in real time in 
hopefully my editing has gotten rid of a, a lot of the bugs or problems that I've had with it so far. Uh, but I think this will help me make games quicker and help me put out more content. Again, I apologize for being a little bit delayed from the last one. I had some buddies from Long Island visiting for the week, so I, I took some time off of work as well to spend more time with them. And now we currently don't have internet, so I'm going to try to export this after I edit it, put it onto my phone, and see if I can upload to the channel from my phone, which I know I can, but it's just going to be a tedious process. Uh, regardless, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you're learning something. And that'll be it. Feel better than I feel today. And enjoy the fuck out of today and tomorrow. Deuces. But the, the day after that, don't worry about it. Now we can, anything can happen.